the singular value decomposition in the form of principal components analysis is the foundation of multidimensional statistics and data analysis. Let's do a quick example. Let's suppose someone gives you a data set X, which consists of five points in R2. 17 minus 10, minus 15, 14, 1, 2, 43, 58, and minus 41, minus 54. If I were to sketch these, it would look something like this. There's a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here, and a point here. Now what we want to get a hold of is the idea that this data somehow lies on an ellipse and perhaps even we can think of it as being sampled from a normal distribution shaped like that ellipse. So this is the underlying question. How do you take some sort of data cloud and say this data cloud is well approximated by samples from a Gaussian distribution along that ellipse with those covariances? Here's what we do. Step zero is center the data. So in this case, the average position of the data, the average data point, is in fact 1, 2. I'll leave it to you to check that. I won't do the arithmetic by hand. So what we're going to do is going to take x minus x bar and we'll make that the new x. So now the data is centered. The next step is to produce what's called the covariance matrix. Now to do this we have to keep track of the number of points. In this case, of course, let's say n is equal to 5. So x is an n by 2 matrix. Again, I'm doing this in two dimensions with a small value of n so that I can write it on paper. But in principle, this applies to any number of points in any dimension. So suppose you're working for a hospital and you had 100,000 patients over the course of many years. And for each patient, you collected information like height, weight, blood pressure, body mass index, um, cholesterol levels, and so on, you might have 100,000 by, say, 15 matrix of data, where each row represents a patient, and each column represents a sensor or a type of measurement you're detecting. Okay, so now we have a data set X, which is centered. Let's define CX to be 1 over N minus 1, x transpose x. So this is essentially x star x from our discussion of the um, Hermitian inner product and of the singular value decomposition, but for statistical purposes we're dividing by n minus 1. In this particular example, I'll let you check that this ends up being 1 quarter of 40-40, 43-20, 43-20, 6560. So we end up with the matrix 1010, 10, 1080, 1080, 1640. So this is called the covariance matrix. What we're really doing here is we're taking the various dot products of the first uh, the first measurement, in this case the x1 measurement, with a second measurement, the x2 measurement, we're seeing how correlated is x1 to itself, is x1 to xy, x1 to x2, and x2 to x2. A common notation for this in statistics is this. The covariance matrix. Now, from a mathematical perspective, this is a symmetric matrix, or even better, it's Hermitian. And therefore, um, 
given it's produced as x transpose x or x star x, we know that it has real eigenvalues, which are all non-negative. We can apply the same principle as the spectral theorem to study this matrix. So let's go back and consider the singular value decomposition, which says that x can be written as u sigma v star. Well, if we consider the matrix x transpose x, and we conjugate this by v, this gives us xv transpose xv, which is u sigma transpose u sigma, which, after all, is sigma transpose u transpose u sigma which is sigma transpose sigma. And remember that sigma is a diagonal matrix in the singular value decomposition. So what this means is that if we take x transpose x and conjugate by v, we get a diagonal matrix. And that diagonal matrix we will call sigma 1 squared, 0, 0, sigma 2 squared. Indeed, sigma here is the matrix sigma 1, 0, 0, sigma 2 the singular values of x. But notice that the singular values of x are at the same time diagonalizing the symmetric matrix Cx. So here's what we're going to do. Let's define a new matrix called Y. y is going to be a change of variables from x. So what I'm going to write is y, uh, y transpose y divided by n minus 1. That would be cy So I want to invent some new data set y whose covariance matrix is the diagonal matrix we just produced by singular value decomposition. How should that be defined? Well, Cy is 1 over n minus 1, and then it is v transpose x transpose xv, which is really v transpose cxv. In other words, if we let y be xv, then what we've done is we've done a change of coordinates from the two measurements we took in our original data set to a new set of measurements called y, which is oriented in such a way that the data is diagonalized. In other words, we've taken the data set which is oriented like this, And we've found the rotation v, which moves it like this. So altogether, what we have is a way to change a change a data cloud somewhere up here to be translated back to the origin, and then rotated along the axes. The first process is just, is just translation. The second process is essentially SVD, also known as PCA. So what we obtain is a sequence of eigenvalues, sigma 1, sigma 2, up to sigma, well, let's say k, if we have an n by k matrix. In this example, it was n by 2. 
And what this is telling, each of these corresponds with a vector v1, v2, up to vk, which are the columns of v. So what we're saying is that for this data set, the data is most stretched in the v1 direction, if I order these such that they're decreasing. And the next most important direction is v2. And sort of the least direction is vk. So when you have a data set oriented like this, we can say something like, the data is oriented in this direction, and that's the v1 direction, after translation. And the some, somehow a measurement of how linear the data is, or how flat the data is, is the ratio, in this case, of sigma 1 to sigma 2. So in this case, if we have only two dimensions, sigma 1 over sigma 2 is often called the signal-to-noise ratio. The idea being that if your data is supposed to be lying on a line, then sigma 1 over sigma 2 indicates the eccentricity of the ellipse along which the data lies. So it's the, thick, it's the length versus the thickness. So in this way, we can take any data cloud written as a matrix X and translate it back to the origin in such a way we can describe it as a Gaussian distribution in dimension K. So this is our basic tool for modeling data sets. We ask, does this data look like a Gaussian? And if so, which way is it oriented, where was it translated, and how much is it stretched?